Give the Lord a clap off and a praise, Brother Anthony. Praise God. Come on. Amen. There ain't nobody like Jesus. Come on. There ain't nobody like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Amen. Look, let's take a minute. Come on. You ain't got nothing to do. You're here. You got something to do because it's about Jesus. It ain't about seeing me, okay? You can see me. I'll come back another time. But let's see Jesus tonight, amen? I want to see who I came to see. I came to see Jesus, hallelujah. There ain't nobody like him, amen? You can't beat him, amen? You can't get around him, hallelujah? All you can do is raise your hands and worship him in spirit and in truth, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I am so honored. I'm not going to have you standing. Go ahead, sit down. Take, amen. Take it easy. Amen. Some of these guys I know, man, don't have you standing up forever. You, you're so tired, man. Your time it gets to the word, man. They done tired you out. I'm trying to get you down so you stay a little longer. I don't know, you know. But uh, I just want to tell y'all how grateful. Amen. And you know, somebody said it best. You can be emotional without being spiritual. But you can't be spiritual without being emotional, you know. And when I've got a family like this family, I'm just telling you, amen, it ain't words. I talk about y'all across the country, amen. And somebody asked me one time, they were talking and, you know, they couldn't understand like what, you know, what the move back and everything like that. I said, listen, I remember... And yes, I am emotional right now, but just bear with me. But I remember when I was young, I remember coming through the doors when we'd be out evangelizing. And I would see Sister Bernie. And I would see Sister Ellen. And I would see Brother Benny. I would see Brother Charlie. I would see all these people. Amen. And they supported me you all supported me in prayers amen and your love just the kind word that you gave me amen I was so grateful and I told somebody I said there is no way hear me there's no way I would not help them in everything amen that I can do amen whatever so if you need me amen I am just a phone call away amen I am just a phone call away hallelujah I thank God for you I really do I thank God for you hallelujah God has been so good, Amen. We're so grateful, Amen. My wife, I told her, I said, uh, I said, are you? Do you want to testify tonight? She said, uh, No. She said, If I do, I'll start crying. I said, Well, you can leave that to me. Power of you, Amen. I do want to thank my cousin, Pastor Bailey. I get a I called him today. I said, Pastor Bailey, and uh, it's kind of different, but I like it. It's catchy. It's catchy. I love his wife. He's such a great woman of God. I mean, I'm telling you, folks, you know, we're not perfect. Men of God are not perfect. I to just take, I want to take my time tonight, okay? So if you gotta go, man, I, I understand you saw me. Here I am. That's great. We're back. You can go home, be happy, amen. And say, Lord bless him. But I just want to take my moment for a second. I, I was telling the church when we were in Arizona, you know, everybody was coming and there was a lot of folks, right? There was people coming, man. We had them all the way back to the refrigerator, okay? Like we was we was really styling profiling in church here, okay? We done turned our living room into uh into the church, the sanctuary. So you couldn't watch TV in the sanctuary and feel good about it, right? So you take that out, you know. I'm like, oh Lord, and then you didn't, you know, you thought, well, we'll just sit in here, and then you sat in there and you thought, well, you might as well be praying. So we took all that stuff out of here. So we didn't have anything in there but fold up chairs. But when the people were coming, and they were looking at me, and they were looking towards me. I remember calling Dad, and I said, Dad, I, I don't. I, I said, Dad, I don't, I don't know about being no pastor. I said, I've just evangelized. I said, I don't really. He said, Well, let me ask you a question. He said, uh, He said, are, are you teaching the people? I said, Yes, sir. He said, Are you loving the people? I said, Yes, sir. He said, Are you talking with them when they got bad times? Yes, sir. You know, he goes through all the questions. He says, Well, what aren't you doing to be a pastor? You just just go keep doing what you're doing, okay? I said, okay, that's all I needed to know. Just wanted to make sure we're on the same way with you here. But I told him, I said, what do you expect from me? Because there were some that come from other churches. There were some people that come that never been to the Lord. And I said, I brought a whiteboard out, and I said, uh, I said, I want to ask you all questions. I said, I'm not trying to just be crazy with you, but I want you to understand something about 
the way this all works. I said, what would you have? If you could have the perfect pastor, if I could be your perfect pastor, what would it be? And, you know, everybody just started talking right away. No, they didn't. They just, they were awkward. You know, everybody's sitting there like, I ain't going to be the first one. <laughs> nah, you're not hanging this on me, Tammy, okay? There's going to be weight here. So I said, okay, love God, right? Can I, can I put that one down? Oh, yeah, 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 that's a good one. Okay. Hey, praying? Yeah, praying's good, fasting. And so we went through all, I told them, I said, come on. And so they started, you know, they knew I was jumping in there, so they jumped in there. We had 23 things. 23, I didn't even know if I could get through the five. You know, I was like, I'm doing everything I can and then doing my job and doing family. I said, no, I'm just kidding. I can do all this. I said, is this what, is this what you think it should be? Is this everything? This is the perfect pass you. This is everything I should be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is right, Brother Clark. Yeah, okay. I said, all right. I said, I said, if I do this, I'm going to be the perfect pastor. Is that right? Yes. I said, okay. I said, now let me ask you a question. What do you think the perfect saint should be? I looked back the board, right? I said, let's try this out a little bit. I said, should they love God? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I believe they should. Should they fast? Should they pray? Should they have long suffering? Should they have compassion? I said, what should a pa-? I said, my place is no different than your place. The only difference is that I'm standing here. He put me here and he put you there. I said, if I do my job, I make it to heaven. If you do your job, you make it to heaven. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That just kind of. That kind of got me off the hook. I said, you know, they, if they ever asked me, they said, well, are you fasting? I could turn around and say, well, are you, you know, what about that long suffering? Tammy, I was asking, you know, I want to make sure. But no, but it's, it's one of those things. You understand that the dynamics of the church is more simple than we make it out to be. It seems like it's so hard, but it's not. We don't, we're not perfect, folks. We're not perfect. But one thing I do know that my dad told me, and I'm bringing him up tonight because I miss him. But he's my buddy, you know. I know I know what he run a good race, Brother Franklin. He run a good phrase race, amen. I remember him telling me, he said, I, I told him one time I was nervous about preaching, Brother Franklin. I think I probably even called Brother Franklin about it. Uh, you know, we always have talk, we talk all the time and checking on each other. And I said, Dad, I said, what if I did not preach anymore? What if I was just um, you know, just sitting back and not sitting back, but you know what I'm saying, going to church because I just, I didn't know. He said, son, I don't care if you never preach another day in your life, but what I do care about is that you're faithful to God. And you never heard my dad pre- say anything to you, but be faithful to God. Amen. You love God, you keep his commandments, and you be faithful to God. Hallelujah. And God will take care of the rest. Amen. God will take care of your situation. He knows what's going on. He know. Amen. Amen. He's never left me. Amen. I've had people shun me. I've had people look by me. Amen. But that's all right. You know what? Because I'm in Facebook. I'm in Facebook. I got my face in the book. Amen. I've got one friend. His name is Jesus, and I follow him everywhere I go. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I just had to get that out of my system, okay? I had to get that out. Amen. So, Lord, bless you tonight. I'm glad for everyone being here. Amen. Again, I'm glad for Pastor and Sister Bailey and I'm grateful for everybody. Amen. That's here. Amen. Y'all go forgive me. I'm whew, whew, a lot of emotion. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I want to, I am very much of application. So I want to tell you something. I, I'm looking at the clock. So my mom would always tell me when I was playing the drum, she said, You're playing too fast. <laughs> you just play too loud and you play too fast. She would be, she'd do like this, she'd go. You know, I knew that was, so every now and then, I just get, you know, it, hey, we're excited, we're rolling down the road, man. I'm just like, da 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 But I want to take a second. I want to tell you something. I like to, I want to help somebody right now, this moment. I want to help you right now. Before I get into the Word, I'm going to get in the Word, I promise. I'm not going to be long-winded. Amen. I've only got 10 pages of notes. Don't worry. Amen. Amen. We're good. I'm watching the clock. But I want to help you right now. See, on a serious note, I want to help you right now. People these days, and listen, don't look at your neighbor and don't look at yourself, okay? Just look at me, okay? It'll all be easy. People today don't carry this. People don't carry this. You know why they got screens? These screens were never meant for that. 
These screens were never meant for the scripture. Now, I'm just showing you. I want to show you something. I want to share something to help you, to help somebody tonight. Somebody's needing this. I'm gonna, I am just want to stop out right here. They don't carry this anymore, and I'm not here jumping. I'm challenging you. This is a challenge for you, okay? This is a challenge for me. Start carrying your Bible. Start carrying your Bible to church. Start carrying your Bible, amen, in your car again. Start carrying it. You know why? You don't want to know why? Because it is a statement. It is a statement about you. It is a statement about what you believe. It is a statement about what you live for. Amen? Carry this thing. Carry this thing because let the text, and I'm not getting on JB, amen, I appreciate these brothers, amen, they was trying to get me all lined out tonight, amen, but listen, let that screen say, hey, y'all y'all put it up on the screen, but let that be for the person that don't have a Bible, let that be for the person that comes for the first time, but man, I've got my word, and I'm going to check out everything that's being said because I want the word in my heart, amen, and the second application is this. In your prayer life, you want to change your prayer life? I'm going to change it in two or three minutes, promise. In your prayer life, go to the back of your Bible. For those of you that are new, you go in the back of your Bible, you know what's there? Anybody? What's there? Concordance, amazing. Concordance. You know how you change your prayer life? You get in the prayer life, you know, I, I, I was that way, I, I was there. I'm trying to, I want to settle something with you. You get in the prayer life and you get down here and you're praying and you pray. The Lord told Israel to bring words, right? Bring words. And we get up and we pray and we say, oh, well, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh, I praise the Lord. And you get in there 30 minutes and you know as well as I do, I've done it too. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm just so empty. Oh, Lord, bless brother so-and-so. Bless brother so-and-so. And you get through all the blessing, brother so-and-so, and pray for sister so-and-so. And you're still empty. And then you get in. So I went, the Lord taught me one time. I was praying and the Lord showed me something. The Lord showed me something and said, hey, get in your concordance. You want to pray? Because I said, man, I want to pray like David prayed. I want to pray. I want to have the words. And, and I said, well, okay. Let me look down through. So I got in my concordance. I started looking at the words. Obedience. Lord, thank you for allowing me to be obedient. Thank you for allowing me, amen, that you came, amen. D, you died for me. Come on, let me walk you through it. A, you're almighty, amen. I thank you for being almighty in my situation. You are the beginning, B, amen. You're the beginning of my life, amen, and everything that exists for me. C, you're the center of my joy. You're the D, door of my salvation. E, you're my everlasting father. F, you see where I'm going with this? I started getting the words started coming to me. It wasn't I didn't need the concordance anymore because the words of God started opening up because I kept going I said God I want to talk to you better I don't want to just say praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord I did that as a child I want to do more than that I want to talk to you words so that I can get to you I can be specific with you and be what you've called me to be amen praise God next time you go pray you say man I'm going through the ABC's of Jesus amen so tonight, let's get in the Word. How about it? Amen? Amen. I just wanted to share that with you. My mom will get on me later. She'll tell me. She'll say, now, son, I love you, but you're going a little... See, they could do that to poor old brother Bailey here. They can do that. He's the preacher here, but Brother Franklin, I remember you used to say, and said, I'm just here for a night, and I go, he can fix it tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Amen. I love my brother. We used to travel. We traveled some together, and man, I tell you what, we had a blast. Amen. We talk about that all the time, but I'm just grateful here tonight, and Lord Jesus, help us tonight. Well, folks, I want to tell you something. We are empty. I am an instructor. Honey, I don't know what happened, but so I believe I can get by without it. Amen. We're going to do it because this is the way we used to do it, Brother Franklin. Amen. So y'all just bear with me tonight. I'm going to go in here. We're going to get started because... God is God's true to His Word. Amen. God's true to His Word. Stand with me tonight. I want to read. We're going to read out of the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 9. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And He said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden. 
And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Now I want you to think about that. They hid themselves. Amen. From the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And I love this part. And the Lord God said unto Adam, said unto him, Where art thou? Tonight I want to simply preach to you tonight, Where art thou? Amen. Pastor Brother, can you pray for tonight? Amen, amen. You may be seated. And my apologies, you know, I usually, I did not have a printer my, when we moved. I left my printer. That was not right to do. I just, and I forgot, and I was like, I'll put it on this. I'll put it on technology. It doesn't work. But that's okay. Because if you study the Word of God, God's got this. Amen. There was a story that went sometime years back. There were some pilots, and they they were flying, and there was a study that was done about because a rash of all of these uh, plane wrecks were happening, and they were going to try and figure out what was going wrong. And so when they studied and they went into this study, they found two surprising things or two things that they found that were really sticking with what was happening with the wrecks. First the people that had the wrecks, it was mostly only one of all of the, I think it was like 100 or 75 wrecks, had been because of the pilot, all but except one. And 75% of that failure was from experienced pilots. Pilots that had had over 400 years, or 400, I'm sorry, 400 hours of flight time. They weren't they weren't just kids. They were veterans. They found that the, surprise, the other surprising thing was that they found that the younger pilots, the newer pilots, they did everything by the book. They double-checked. They triple-checked their rivets. They, they looked through. They went through the manifest. They were looking through. They got in the cockpit. They were doing everything they were supposed to do. It was the veteran pilots that were trying to cut the corners it was the veteran pilots that got sloppy. It was the veteran pilots. That, listen, when you've been walking with the Lord like the years that some of us have been walking, sometimes you start skipping because you start forgetting and stop doing it by the book. Amen. That's why I'm talking to you tonight. Amen. You got to do it by the book, right? That's why you need the book with you at all times. Amen. You need the Word of God, amen, because it's going to keep you from the compromise. It's going to keep you, amen. You can get sloppy. You can get reckless. You can get everything because you know what it is, what people think? I, I've been in this for years, man. We grew up in this. 
It's easy for us. Man, we know what to do. We know what to say. People say, oh, how you doing? You walk in there, oh, bless God, everything's great, and your world's falling apart. Oh, oh, you know, but I'm speaking by faith. That's a lie. You ain't speaking by faith. You're speaking because you don't want to feel. Listen, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have terrible days. But you know what? That song, I kept listening to that song. He will never fail. He has never failed. He's never failed. Now, the answer that you got may not be the one that you want, but He's never failed you. He cannot fail you because He is the King of glory. Amen. He said, I cannot lie. I do not lie. I will not lie. Amen. We do that. So we come to tonight's message. What does that got to do with the message? Well, I'll get to that. Good question. We get here and the first question thing that happens we see all this going on this is the first time read it in your book this is the first time that God ever the Lord God ever asked the question well think about that if you never thought about that's pretty why would God need to ask a question where art thou that blew my mind why would God ask that question? He knew exactly where they were. Why would he ask that question about that? Why, why does he need to know? Amen. Because God is, if you didn't know this, there's a word that says he is omniscient. And brother, I don't know when to start them because I don't know where I'm at in my notes. So you just, you just open the first one up. In Psalms 94 and 11, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of man. That they are vanity. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of men. He knows everything you're thinking. He knows everything I'm thinking. Why? Because He's omniscient. He knows it all. Amen. Give me the next one. Matthew 10, 29 and 30. And are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. He knows. He said, listen. They're, I don't care about, the birds can fall down, Danny. they can fall down on the ground, I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to feed them. We was watching out today, I was at my mom's house, we were standing there, all of a sudden out of the middle of nowhere, here's this little baby deer just eating right there, like he's, he is as close as to you are, brother. He just, or she is, she's just eating right there. You know what, she wasn't worried about nothing, she didn't care about nothing. Man, I was excited, I was getting the video, I was messing up, you know, I was having that starlight moment. But they didn't worry about it. Why? She didn't worry because why? Because she's got a father up in heaven, a creator, a man that created her and said, I'm going to take care of you. You're going to go down that house and eat today. Well, God don't think about that. Oh, yeah, go read your Bible. I bet, I bet you'd be wrong. Amen. He cares about everything. Amen. God knows everything. He's omniscient. He knows everything. So why would God need to ask a question, where art thou? Where are you at? Where are you at in your life with God right now? I want to ask you a question, I, and I mean this to myself. I'm not trying to, to beat anybody up. I'm not trying to be anything but what God has called me to be. Where are you? I remember when I was a boy, you remember when you was a little kid? You'd be running around, you run around, you, your daddy or your mom would say, now look here. Now, don't you go off anywhere. Now, you stay right there. And don't you go anywhere. I'll kill you. <laughs> See, we could say that back then. My mom and daddy got away with that. They said, I'll kill you right here. I, I ain't lying to you. It it's just it. I'll have two kids instead of three, okay? It's, it doesn't matter. It's just less I got to feed. And lo and behold, mom would come back and I'd be gone somewhere. We were talking the other day when I was a kid. I used to walk off and when I was a little boy, I was about three years old, I guess, we was down in Richmond, we were still in Richmond. My dad said one time, he said, man, I just get in the car, I thought, I'm going to follow him, Jude, I'm going to just see, if, see how far he goes without looking back. He said, I went three blocks without even looking back, I just kept walking. I guess that's why I wound up in Arizona, so, you know, I was just uh... but they say, don't, don't, you, don't you go anywhere, where are you? Dad pulled up in the car, where are you at, boy, where are you, what are you doing? Then you get a little bit older, you know, you start driving. You get that driving stage in your life, and you got the car, and curfew comes. And nowadays, the text message comes through, the, the phone rings. Hey, Johnny, where are you at? You better be coming back home, okay? 
And then, you know, you get a little bit older. You get a little bit older, you get our age, my age. I shouldn't say our age because everybody ain't as old as I am. You get my age, and the man of God comes up and says, where are you? Where are you? Somebody that really cares about your family situation, that cares about your spirituality, that cares about your mentality, that cares about you, not because they're getting paid, not because they're, they're, they're trying to make a name for themselves, because they care about you, and they say, where are you? Come on, somebody. Amen. And here's God. He says, Adam, where art thou? Now, I don't know about you, but there, you know, you can take a word and you can take it and you can mean two different things with a word or a phrase. You can say it in two different ways and it means two different things. I can say, did you see that boy in excitement? And you're like, oh, yeah, it was the most amazing thing I've seen. Or I can say, did you see that boy? My mom, I, I, I could say, man, did you eat that cake? I'm getting excited with my sister, and then my mom turns around and uses the same question. Did you eat that cake? <laughs> you see what I'm saying here? God, God's talking. God's going to talk to somebody tonight. God's going to talk to you tonight. He looked at Adam, and he said, Adam, where art thou? Where art thou? Where, where are you, Adam? He wasn't asking Adam where he was, he knew exactly where he was hiding. You see, that, that ought to tell you something right there. When you start hiding out from God, you got problems. Well, I ain't hiding out from God, you missing church. You hide now. Now listen, don't get me wrong. I've worked. I've had to work. Brother Danny back there, he's had to work. Amen. I, I we everybody's had to work at some point. I'm not getting I'm not talking about that, so we knock the technicalities out. But I'm talking about you just don't want to go. You just think, well, I, all right, Ben, I know, I know what that preacher's talking about. No, you don't. No, you don't, because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do my job, and the person that didn't come tonight, that's between them and God, but God's going to say, why weren't you there? Where are you? Where are you, Adam? Where are you tonight? Amen. I want somebody to get a responsibility. Amen. I got news for you. Brother Clark's gone. He's gone. You can't use him anymore. Amen. You got to stand up for God yourself. You're going to answer to God for what you have done and what you are and who you are. Amen. Because you love God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Come on. Listen, I love my dad, but that day's over. I've got to have a worship inside of me that says, Brother John, I want to get to heaven. I want to make it to where they are all at. I want to see Sister Bernie. I want to see Brother Benny. I want to see my dad and my granddad. I want to see those that have gone before me. I've got to be more of what God called me to be. My mom and dad didn't raise me to be no wimp. It's true. It's very true. <laughs> About my belt buckle. It was storming and your pastor, I can say it. Now. See, I love how I can do this now. I can turn the juice on him, right? I got the microphone. It was raining. He said, you better get up that road, that, that belt buckle. It hit light and it hits that big old belt because this big old Texas daddy had brought me one from a big coal show. I had this big old, I thought I was a Texan, you know. And lightning strike, I said, Lord of mercy. And I was running up the road like this. <laughs> Dwayne done scared me to death. I forgave him of it a few years later. Yeah. But God's saying, where are you? Where are you at? Where are you at in your spiritual life? Where are you at? I don't, I don't see, because God's got you on like an like alarm clock. Let me, let me share something with you. Let me get your attention with something. You ever went? And somebody walked in church and you thought somebody's going to say hi to you and he just walked right by you. Act like they didn't even know you. You're like, man, what? Like, here I am. Like, hey, hey, you know, without putting a sign up. And he walked right by you. And you think, man, God showed me one time. He said, I'm trying to get you to understand how I feel. I was fasting one time. And 
I was, I was so hungry. Boy, I was hungry. And I'm not trying to make this funny, but I'm trying to give you a I want you to understand. I want you to apply this today, not next week, not get it out. I want you to remember this message, not because of me, but because of the God that's inside of me. But I was fasting. Darlene, I was fasting, sis, and I was so hungry. And God said, I'm trying to get you to understand that feeling you feel right now is how much I miss you and how much I want to be close to you. That's God's alarm clock. I want you to be that close. I want to be that close to you. I want to know you. Amen. And so everything that was going on in my life, I started thinking about what God feels. Amen. When you don't show up on time and you're supposed to be there. Amen. And God says, look how I feel. I miss, amen, the time that I have with you. When you get, amen, something goes wrong in your life, God says, now you know when you cause chaos in, around me and around my plans for you now you know how I feel he doesn't do it because he's saying I'm punishing you he's doing it because he wants you to understand that hey this is how it is this is reality and he looks at Adam and he said where art thou Adam hid himself and the reason why he hid himself because he knew the consequences of the things he had done he knew what he had done God was talking to Adam and he was looking at him and said, Adam, I believe God, you know, some people will probably feel like God was looking. I mean, you could think of it different ways, but it seems like a lot of people look at it though God was being hard and saying, where art thou, Adam? And then the judgment comes, you know, the next parts of judgment and everything. You this or this, this is like, oh my gosh, there's no hope. But you know what I feel? Think about this. Think about your kids or your, or your, or your grandkids or, or somebody else. When something goes wrong, you're upset. Of course you're upset. But it's going to change the whole dynamic. Think about, we never read again about the Garden of Eden. The dynamic was changed. It was never going to be the same. And God's looking and all. I can just imagine him crying and saying, Adam, where art thou? What were you thinking, Adam? What were you thinking, Adam? You knew what we had. We walked together daily. We talked together daily. You think that he gets excited because he has to, has to chastise us? You think he gets excited? No. Amen. I believe he weeps. Amen. I believe that it hurts him. He said, I want you near me. I want you near me. And he looks at Adam. He said, Adam, where art thou? Where are you at in your life? Where are you at in your spirit? And some of us don't even know where we are spiritually. You know, the, Paul said this. Walk in the spirit, what? And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know what happened to Adam? Adam got distracted by the thing in front of him. You read right before that, had Eve going through the garden and everything. Adam, take a bite of this. It's, it's really good. What? Wait, what? He didn't know what to do. Why? Because that's the, that's the gift he had. Well, I don't want to give up my gift. I know a lot of people in here say, well, give it up. Well, it's like somebody come to you and say, okay, release your wallet. Let's take your bank account. All right, let's talk about that. <laughs> Give up something that you truly love. Amen. Adam was dealing with something in his mind, and God said, Adam, what did you do? Yes, he said, where art thou? But he was trying to give Adam a chance. Imagine, just imagine for a moment, if Adam would have came clean and just said, Lord, I failed you. David, what did David do when he failed? Lord, I'm the man. I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. you got to be willing to take responsibility for what you have done. Don't be blaming everybody else. Don't be blaming your wife or your husband or your kids. Amen, amen. Don't be blaming the preacher. Don't be blaming the church. You take responsibility for your own decisions. You want to see God move? Take responsibility for your own decisions. 
Take responsibility. Amen. Because with old brother David, God wretched through time and wretched out in grace. Amen. And brought a little bit back to him. He should have been stoned to death, but God, God forgave him. God forgave him and said, hey, look here. Look here. We're going to get by this. We're going to get through this. It wasn't the same. Now, he had to pay a price. You're going to pay a price when you sin because it leaves a scar. But I'm asking you tonight, where art thou? Where art thou? Where are you in your life? Where are you with your walk with God? Where are you with your family? Where are you in these things? Because you got to understand, when you, when you go out and you do something, everybody in here, if you look back, everybody in here, you're going to change the dynamics of this church. You ever think about that? You do something wrong, and you're going to change the dynamics of this church. Listen, I've made mistakes, okay? I am not perfect, but I am on top of saying, I'm sorry. I, you know, I want to make things right. I remember, you remember my dad? My dad would come down and he'd say, if I've done anything to anybody in this church, I want to get down before you right now, and I want to say I'm sorry. And I'm telling you today, if I've done anything to any of you, if any of you think that I've done something to you, I'm sorry. I don't want to be that way. I want to be what God's called me to be. Amen. I was so excited to hear. Where's she at back there? She's one of them. Sister Jody, I'm just going to pick on you for a second, okay? I heard the Holy Ghost was running around here the other night. Amen. I heard the Spirit of God was moving in this place. Come on. Amen. I heard God was moving in this place. Well, I thought that, you know, I didn't think it's going to be the same. Well, it's the same. It's the same. He had not changed. We change. We're the ones that get, you know, well, it ain't the same as the way it used to be. Hey, I'm sorry. You know, you need to grow up a little bit. Get a smile. You can be seated. Grow up a little bit. Get a smile on your face. I'm asking you, where art thou? Where art thou? Where, what happened when we was all worshiping God and everybody was running the aisles? Well, it was different back then. You know, we had all the others. Well, listen. I am determined. The, uh, not the Bible. I am determined, the song says. To hold out to the end. Jesus is with me. On Him I can depend. And I know I have salvation for I feel it in my soul. I am determined. I am determined. That's a statement. That's a proclamation. I am determined to hold out to the end because I know that my God will be faithful to me. My God is faithful. Amen. Have I been through things? Yes, I've been through things. But does that make me to push down and to cower down? No. I keep going. Why? Because I want Him to know how much I care about this. I want the devil to know how much I'm going to do to him. Amen. I'm going to live my life for God. Come on, somebody. Amen. It all boils down to what do you want to do with your life? Do you want to run and hide when things go wrong? Or do you want to stand in front of God and say, Lord, I did it on my own. I did it on my own. I want, to, I want to do it your way, not my way. I want to do it because, you know, the Bible says in James 4 and 17, for a man, or therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You can choose what you want to do today. You can choose what you want to be today. I know you're going through things. I know that there's people in here that are probably going through And I'm going to tell you right now, your pastor can tell you, I don't ask anybody anything. I don't I want to know nothing. Amen. I've told my family, I don't want to know nothing. I'm just like my dad used to be. Don't tell me anything. Because when I preach, I want to be clear-minded, Brother Franklin. Is that right? I want to be clear-minded. I want to tell you exactly what God's saying. And I'm telling you tonight, you're going through things. You've made mistakes. You've sinned. You've done wrong. But that doesn't make count you out. That doesn't put you at the... Listen, turn it around. Turn it around. Amen? Turn around. I remember my teachers in school. Amen? They knew I wasn't the sharpest tack in the woodshed. But they, they, they kept telling me, hey, you can do it. Man, you can do it. You just got to apply yourself. Just apply yourself. 
And I kept going to school. Lord knows why. And I just kept going. And I just kept going. But it's okay. Why? Because you've got to make up in your mind, I'm going to beat the things that are trying to beat me. I am not going to bow down to what is trying to make me bow down because the devil's going to take your life. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy everything inside of you. Amen? Tonight, amen. I know it wasn't a long message, but i got to apologize to you because, again, my technology, but that's not an excuse. But I don't think you need a lot of words. What I think you need is a lot of God. Now, I know this, that if you love God, you want to get closer to Him. Maybe you haven't got, maybe you haven't repented yet. That's what He wanted Adam to do. Adam, I need you to repent. That's what He was looking for. Adam, where art thou? But Adam got caught up in Eve, and he got focused on Eve. He got focused on the gift, and he forgot the giver of the gift. When you forget about the giver... Amen. Because a lot of people's got talents. Some people's got more than enough talents. They can do a lot of things. Amen. They can got a lot of things that they can do in the church. And they go, oh, I am that good. Oh, yeah, I can sing. I can preach. I can do all this stuff. It ain't, you ain't done nothing. You're just taking care of what God gave you. Amen. You're nothing. I just want to be a part of what God is doing. Amen. Amen. Just be a part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. But don't put yourself where Adam was at because there's a lot of people hiding out tonight. They're hiding in these pews. They're hiding in the pews. Oh, you can raise your hands and you can clap. But God's trying to get you to get down to business. God's trying to get you to get down to business with Him because He wants you to understand that, hey, I'm wrapping this thing up. I'm wrapping this thing up. My dad's gone. He's wrapped up. But guess what? He's in glory now. He's in glory. I'm not, I love it. Amen. I love it. I'm so grateful for what God's doing. And He'll do it in your life. You need the Holy Ghost? Tonight's the night. Not tomorrow. Not next week. We started praying here before church. And man, the Lord was moving. The Lord is moving. The Lord can move again. Amen. That's what I love about it. God can do it again. Amen. If you haven't repented, tonight's the night. If you haven't been baptized, tonight's the night. There ain't no other night. There is no other night like tonight. Amen. You want revival? Amen. Turn it up a notch, church. Turn it up a notch. Amen. Get a little bit more into God. Get a little bit more into prayer life. Get a little bit more into the Word of God. Get a little bit more into what God is doing. And God will show you. God will show you miraculous things. Amen. I'm getting ready to close. But I want to tell you one last thing. There was a, there was, when, when God, when God was dealing with Adam, Adam was hiding Right? Most of the time when you're hiding, it's in a dark space. Right? You get in the dark. There, there's darkness in your life. When you're hiding, you're in the dark. The Bible says this, that God called us out of darkness, what? Into His marvelous light. Now think about this. Think about this. God will call you, right? He called you out of the darkness. He didn't walk into the darkness. He called you out. So God, anybody tells me, well, God's everywhere I'm at. No, He is not. I'm sorry. God don't go with you to the beer hall. God doesn't go with you. Amen. This and that and all these other places and filthiness and your thoughts and all this other stuff. He said He calls you out of the darkness into His marvelous light. He was trying to call Adam. He's calling you to come out. Amen. And be His people. You look at the prodigal son. And you look at the sheep. The sheep didn't know any better. That's why the shepherd had to go looking for him. The prodigal son knew what he was doing. Because the Bible says he came to himself. He came to himself. You're going to come to yourself one way or the other. Don't sit back. Just because you think, man, he's just wanting to preach at me. He's just wanting to preach at me. No, I've been there on my own where I've hid out from God 
where I've been like the prodigal son. I'm sitting there looking and saying, man, why am I sitting back here when I could be in the presence of God? I don't want to be looking and watching everybody, amen, being blessed by God and me sitting back and wondering what happened. I don't want to be the prodigal son knowing that there's good things in my father's house, but I'm too proud to go back and say I was wrong. Tonight, you can change that. Tonight, you can be what God has called you to be. There's no difference in me and you. It's just where I'm at and where you're at. Be faithful to God. Get your life right with God tonight. Don't wait till the next week. Don't wait till a year later. Get your life right with God right now because I promise you, I promise you, there is nothing greater than this journey of God. There's nothing greater that you'll ever do in your life that's any greater than what you're going to get here. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. Hallelujah. There's groom at the cross.